It's 9 a.m. on Thursday, the 24th of April on RTE1 and RTE News Now. This is Morning Edition. Well, Siobhan McGuire from the Sunday Times and Breda Brown from Unique Media join me now in studio. And if we turn, first of all, to the, the issue of the water charges, because not everyone is going to have a water meter before the end of the year. They're not. The charges are coming into action from October, but we're not going to pay until January. So a lot of people will be aware that they have started rolling out the actual meters in various parts of the country. So over the past few days, we have seen, though, protests and blockades erected in Cork, where anti-water uh, charge individuals are just not letting the, uh, the workers come in to put in and install the charges. So this has actually spread now to Dublin as well in the past couple of days. So it will be interesting to see how it pans out. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's pretty much a done deal. It is actually going to happen. And in some of the coverage today, it mentions that if you don't let the installers into your property or into your particular area, you're going to face a fine of €5,000 and potentially three months in jail. So again, I think it may become a cause, let's say, for some people. And that's the Department of the Environment saying that anyone who is disrupting the meter installations can either be fined mm -hmm. or jailed uh, on this issue. Um, and Irish Water confirmed that work had stopped at the Cork site yesterday. Um, Siobhan, it does seem that the residents there were... We're really they were. Blockade. I mean, it was a very small group who staged the protest. Um, they seem to most definitely have gotten their message across. Mm. Uh, work was stalled. I do believe it was resumed, and uh, you know they're carrying on regardless. Um, I think, as Breda mentioned, uh, the, the water meters are coming in, whether we like it or not. And I do feel that the protests are a wee bit late uh, in the day now. I think you know perhaps it, it would have been a better idea to, to start getting the mes message across, the anger, the frustration many, many months ago. Well, I suppose the other big issue in the papers today is the teachers' conferences, but we're not really discussing the main issues that no. we should be discussing of at the conferences. We're discussing other issues. Not at all. I think the main issues have been totally lost because everything has been marred by infighting, by rowing, by uh, claims of online bullying, by death threats. So all of these issues are going on around the actual topics that we're supposed to be discussing. So, I mean, from a parent's perspective who are looking at these um, individuals engaging in this behaviour, you sort of have to wonder, are these people teaching my children? From a children's perspective, you know, they're looking going, God, that's my teacher. Um, so, I mean, the next time a child is disruptive in class, you know, they could turn around and sort of go, well, actually, we saw you doing exactly the same thing um, at your own conference. So, really, they should be leading a little bit more by example. Well, I tell you, let's have a listen to uh, the General Secretary of the ASTI in relation to the threat uh, made against him. ASTI fight back say Pat King is attempting to smear them. Not aware of any post containing a death threat, they say there was a comment which asked how he could look his grandchildren in the eye. Immediately that, that was made known to us, it got straight on to my other moderators and I said, look, check the website, check the Facebook page for any offensive material, take it down and make a, st make a statement. The following day, we made a statement that we do not accept any personal attacks. Well, that was uh, in relation to the online uh, threats made to the General Secretary of the ASTI. That was the, uh, the other group saying that, you know, that, that they had taken the comments down at the time. But this whole issue is, is overshadowing the conferences. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lesson in, in, in how not to behave and to set an example for, for the pupils and the teachers. But underneath all of that is a huge amount of frustration uh, among teachers. Um, and rightly so, they've had, you know... Um, their, their pays, uh, pay cuts, um, pay freezes, um, and then you have the, the minister talking about huge reform within the system. Um, but at, on the, the other side of the, the coin is that you can look at teachers and go, well, they have fantastic holidays. Uh, you know, they have kind of shorter working days than, than most. Um, and also the, the system itself, the junior cert system, for example, is in serious need of, of reform. I mean, it's, it's going on, what, about 40 years now? Um, and, and and what the minister is proposing, changes to applied maths, changes to uh, introducing practical exams in the sciences, that all makes really good sense. It, PE as a subject, I mean, that, that all sounds like good stuff. So you would kind of wonder or question why there's such a huge amount of opposition to it. And there is a huge element in relation to reputation management, as you say. What impact is this going to have on the perception of these particular unions? And it's not going to end there because ASTI members will find out today um, the result of their ballot on further industrial action, you know. So I also, on another point, and um, Siobhan might disagree with me on this, but I think they get 
a disproportionate amount of media coverage. I really do, these you know, particular conferences that take place. I think that's down to the fact that it happens over the Easter period where it's actually quieter in the news cycle. There's not as much going on. The doll is closed. The courts are closed. So, I mean, the papers all week have just been literally double and triple page spreads in terms of the content. Um, so from that perspective, they're also leaving themselves, I think, wide open to negative coverage as well as the message they're trying to get across. But I suppose education is such a big, big issue for us mm. and for our children as well. I mean, it's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I got an email from a secondary school teacher late last night and he was making the point that he didn't understand why the heckling was, was the issue that everyone was mm. focusing in on, that teachers on a daily basis have to stand up in front of a class where they're often harassed, um, sometimes sexually harassed, have to deal with bullying, have to deal with uh, bad behaviour and yet the resources aren't in place for them to deal with these issues and that's the point that they want to get across uh, rather than you know shouting each other down. Now another story reader you've been looking at is the crackdown on dole cheats uh, and yes. then Minister Burton has been talking about this this morning as well. So it is and it's quite interesting. Um, a man who was uh, claiming the dole which is means tested as we know turns out he actually had €400,000 in his bank account as you do. Um, so this is as a result of more intergovernmental and interdepartment uh, cooperation uh, between the Department of Social Protection and also Revenue. So they're working together um, and what they did in this case was sort of asked Revenue for a list of people who were paying dirt tax. So when Revenue uh, sent over that list they were able to cross match and see who actually did have lump sums in their bank account that weren't being declared. So this is how this particular individual got caught. He's been fined two and a half thousand euro. He is in prison for four months um, and he has to pay back the money that he received which is in the in the region of about 30,000 euro. So I think it's a great um, demonstration of how where there's more teamwork among the departments that we can crack down on this type of fraud and I mean the money saved the figures that uh, Minister Burton has been quoting this morning are phenomenal 10 million already so far it's a, and it's a huge amount, isn't 23 it? million in terms of future payments so um, from that perspective absolutely well done but you do have to ask where is the incentive for individuals like this not to reoffend I mean you get a, a two and a half grand fine for for milking the system essentially uh, you can pay back the 30,000 because you have have that 400,000 nest egg sitting in your bank, bank account, you get a suspended prison sentence. What's, what's not to stop you from, from doing the same thing all over again? Or it seems amazing though that the, that the two departments are only just beginning to kind of to talk Absolutely. to each other, that, yeah. that revenue and uh, social welfare are only just kind of starting to work together on this issue. You would have it? thought that would have system should have been in place a long time ago so there's opportunity there for other departments as well to work together in a similar stance. And uh, another story this morning and one that I, I hope isn't necessarily true, uh, academic brands Brian Baru wore as a myth. This is a, a story one that you've been looking at. Uh, yeah, story in relation so to the Battle of Clontarf. That's right. There's a there's a, an, a, a Dr. Moira Nimweni from Oxford University has uh, claimed in in a new book that um, the Battle of Clontarf uh, was fabricated. The story essentially is based on the siege of Troy. Um, so uh, I I hope the sixty thousand people who visited the reenactment of the battle over the the last weekend aren't uh, aren't tuned in to hear that that what they were seeing was potentially. Uh, a myth but she's uh, I mean it's a very interesting slant on it though isn't it that that it's based on the siege of Troy it's such, a, it's such an important historical uh, day in Irish history in ancient Irish history absolutely and um, you know you, you, you can draw parallels between the two battles and you know it was an awfully long time ago so who's to say she, you can she's wrong back but, it, well exactly <laughs> yeah but uh, I, I think it's nicer to think that it did actually happen and yeah. you know he was Inflamed. successfully defeated 7,000 Vikings with just an army 4,600 or whatever it was. Indeed. Well, Siobhan and Brida, thank you both very much indeed for joining us this morning. And now it's over to Dave for the sports news. Okay, thank you. Bayern Munich will have to score at the...